everyone, it's the Easter weekend. Today it's Good Friday um, and we've got a four day weekend in the UK so I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to do um, sort of part reading vlog and part reading challenge. I've never done like a readathon before or something where I try and read as, like, as many books as possible or read as much as possible in a 24 hour period or anything like that but I thought this might be a really good opportunity because it's lovely weather outside and what I intend on doing is setting myself up on my balcony making a little sun lounger arrangement um, and basically pretend I'm on holiday at the beach and just read and read and read and read. So what I'm going to do is give myself a time period within which I can read as much as possible. Originally I wanted to give myself 48 hours and then when I thought about it spread over the four day weekend that's 12 hours a day of reading and I think that's probably a little bit unrealistic so I'm going to go for 24 hours and then just see how much reading I can actually get done. I'll time myself as I read to make sure I hit like the 24 hour mark. And the books I'm gonna try and read, haha, are these. I have picked um, all the short books basically <laughs> under my bed um, because I wanted for this challenge to try and read like a high quantity because I don't normally do that. And these are all books that I've had for a really long time and have wanted to read and haven't for whatever reason. But now the fact that they are short is uh, is working to their favour because that means that they've been picked. I think all of them are at least 300 pages or less. That's kind of what I went for. And I don't know what I'm going to read first. Uh, but what we have is The First Bad Man by Miranda July, Daphnis and Chloe, which was given to me by Jean, like probably about three years ago, The Remains of the Day by Keto Ishiguro, the Shepherd's Life by James Rebanks, The Cutout Girl by Bart Van S, Trumpet by Jackie Kay, This Is How You Lose Her by Juno Diaz, Sula by Toni Morrison, The End We Start From by Megan Hunter, How to Breathe Underwater by Julie Oranger, uh, what We Lose by Zinzi Clemens, Constellations by uh, Sinead Gleason, and Grand Union by Zadie Smith. So some of these are non-fiction, some of these are short stories, some of these are essays, and some of these are fiction. So it's a nice big mix. And I think I'm gonna start with This Is How You Lose Her. And that's basically based on the fact that it feels like a more summery book because it's yellow and orange. And I think this is gonna get me into the mood <laughs> of summer reading. That's very, very loose, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna start with. And then I think I'll just see how I, see how I go. I, I want to read all of them and I'm not too fussed which ones I get read. Um, so we've just had breakfast, we had some hot crust buns, yummy, and uh, I'm going to set myself up now on the balcony. I have creamed up, I've got my sunglasses, I have got my coffee, and it's 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna start my timer. We're an hour and a half in and it's already got pretty serious. I've changed into a bikini top <laughs> underneath my top and I've already come in out of the sun to have a little nap because I got too hot. So we're firmly in holiday vibes. I'm about two thirds of the way through. This is how you lose her. And I'm really, really, really enjoying it. These are all short stories and a lot of them are about like the same person going back through some of his ex-girlfriends and other stories about other characters but they're all linked thematically and they're all about um sort of Dominican people who are living in the US um during about the 80s I think and it's really about relationships between men and women but specifically within this uh like cultural group and I'm loving the way he writes I love the mix of like the Spanish and the slang words that he's putting together like it really it paints a really vivid portrait of these characters and especially as a lot of them are 
blokes being a little bit dickish to the women but also just not understanding the women so i'm whizzing through it and i'm getting quite cocky actually because i'm like oh yeah i'm not even two hours in and i've nearly finished one of my books <laughs> we are one down i think that's two and a half hours um and i finished the book so i've just paused for lunch um and it's about two o'clock now um, and i had quite a late lunch because i was just like loving uh gino gino diaz so much i was just like trying to get through it so i'm going to choose my next one i did post about this um on instagram to get some recommendations on what books people have enjoyed so i've got a lot of people recommending the remains of the day a lot of a lot of people and also a few um recommendations for the cutout girl and the shepherd's life and i think that's quite good because i am in the mood for a bit of non-fiction i feel like it's probably too hot outside for me to be reading about shepherds in the lake district but what i might do is start the cutout girl now have the remains of the day as my next option and then and then see how I feel about The Shepherd's Life maybe uh, maybe tomorrow. But there's also recommendations for a lot of these books, to be fair. So we'll see how we get on, but I remain excited for most of them. <laughs> bit of afternoons reading i think i'm about four and a half hours down into my into my countdown and i've, I've read about 100 pages of the cutout girl and it's it's really amazing so far this is bart venice's journey to discover the history of his own family so his grandparents in the netherlands during the war um hid jewish children it says in there they hid jewish children but this is about one girl in particular called erlene who stays with them um, even after the war and was almost part of their family for a long time and then for some reason um, there was a falling out and he doesn't know what happened like between his grandmother and Lean and they didn't see each other for years and years so this is him finding out her story he connects with her learns about her story her parents where she came from and what it was like for her being essentially a Jewish refugee within the Netherlands um, during the war and he's also sort of piecing together the wider context of what it was like for Jews in the Netherlands like it's it's really really well written very interesting and he's putting himself in the story and um, because it is about his family to be fair but it's never like overbearing it's kind of a mix of Lean's story and the information that she's given him and also his journey in finding it out and visiting um, different places like in The Hague and Dort and these places in Netherlands where she lived and yeah it's just it's very amazing and incredible and there's so many like like photos and letters in here um, and with all kind of wartime books it's just very it makes it so much more poignant when it's about real real people in real lives so i'm loving this i'm probably going to pause for a little bit now and have some dinner we just had a little stroll on the rooftop and um it's still really nice outside in fact look who has taken my spot if you can see who's out here hello <laughs> just engrossed in your book it's really it was really comfy there it's actually even nicer i think now that the sun's gone in it was getting quite hot it's a little like a little uh, greenhouse on our on too our balcony cold, sometimes. Are you too cold? Is yeah, it? I'm gonna come in in a minute. <laughs> Good morning. I think I averaged about four and a half hours of reading yesterday, which is slightly below my six hour um, target to get to get 24 hours done over the course of this weekend. I think you can just, yeah. So that's like five, uh, just five hours, 15 minutes is what I've just got up to from this morning. I am loving this. I'm absolutely racing through it. It's so, it's so interesting and so beautifully written. And I love how it is dealing with this issue of Lean's past, but also like the patches in her memory and the process of me remembering things. Like at the moment she's being passed from like family to family, essentially. And it's so interesting that as she becomes more and more lost and she loses more structure and the bonds of relationships 
are becoming thinner and you know less less strong um she her memory b becomes more and more patchy and it's more difficult for her to recall things and it's really interesting how Bart Van Ness puts that into the book and he talks about he'll give you a chapter and then say Lean's a bit unhappy with this chapter because I've made it more vivid than her actual memory but I've taken memories from other people and more research and it, it's so interesting how um, aware of the process of remembering a story this book is and I think that's what is really impressing me that it it's an examination of the process of remembering your life and your journey as much as it is about your the life itself it's fantastic and i'm racing through it so about i'm just over halfway through and it's gonna be oh, it's touching the camera it's gonna be very very hot today like 25 degrees or something um so what i think i might do is um probably have a shower i should probably have a shower um, and get dressed and i think my outside time is going to be this morning because i think it's going to get hot later on but i still want to get some sun so i think i'll set up my little sun lounger again get some sun this morning and then probably migrate indoors like i did yesterday uh to keep keep myself cool but keep the reading going I'm breaking for lunch and an ice lolly, but I'm actually really enjoying it out there. So I think I'm just gonna reapply some sun cream and uh, get a little bit more sun. Also, this is excellent. I absolutely loved it. Finished it, gave it five stars, brilliant. So now it's on to remains of the day. The sun went in, so I went and had a little shower and got changed out of my sun creamy sweaty clothes. But we've come back outside, had a little uh, set up in the shade. I've got a friend who's joined me. Hello, <laughs> good friend. <laughs> we've got a nice little uh, sofa. I feel like I'm in a padded room <laughs> and we've padded out the balcony. So what I'm going to say this time? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Um, but I'm, I'm really enjoying this so far. It's definite change of pace and it's I'm loving how English this butler's voice is it's um, it's really making me chuckle Good morning, happy Easter. I'm in like an excellent mood today because the last couple of days I've been really filled up with a cold, um, which has been fine because all we've been doing is sitting, on, sitting around and reading, but I had the most amazing sleep last night and I'm feeling so much better today. Um, I just got that like sun through the clouds, ah, moment where you like suddenly feel a lot better. So that's brilliant. Also, I finished the remains of the day last night. It was excellent i'm really i really really enjoyed it and i'm so pleased because I've, I've already put this and the cutout girl on will's list like i've just finished reading them and been like right now you need to read these next because i think you're going to really enjoy them but this is the thoughts of a butler from 1959 but he's looking back at the period in his career um between the two world wars the 20s and the 30s in this big estate very downton abbey-esque and it's his thoughts on so many things like Englishness, dignity, and it's just looking at the idea of that social class of people who run, run country houses, like the upper classes of England and how important they thought they were. Um, and also the idea of the stiff upper lip and not betraying any of your emotions. It's just so 
careful and precise and exact in the way that it's structured and the way that it unfolds all of these different elements of the story to you I'm, i was very very impressed with it and thoroughly enjoyed it so that's amazing i've had like two five star reads already out of this project later this afternoon i'm going to do a live show with jean and jen a live show and basically we're going to bake and stream it live at the same time but i've not really organized yet how we're going to stream it i do know how we're going to stream it but i haven't set it up yet and i don't think i've publicized it either so i've not really told anyone i'm going to do be doing something live but i better sort that out so i'm going to just spend this morning getting that set up um, and also I've been very very clever and I put this in the fridge last night so it's nice and cold ready to snap and I might eat this for breakfast <laughs> Shame to say I ate that entire chocolate egg um, in one go and now Will is making me more eggs for breakfast. <laughs> set myself up outside again but I got a bit of heat rash yesterday um, so I'm probably not gonna go too crazy just have but cover myself up a little bit and then um, just have some morning Sun I think today um, just because it is, it is so lovely maybe try and stay out of the direct Sun come in but I'm starting down here I had it very well prepared is uh, what we lose by Zinzi Clemens which I actually don't know anything about other than I've heard great things so I'll update you. In terms of time I am a little bit behind. I'm at 10.40 that's where I got to yesterday and really I should be at 12 already by now if I'm going to get 24 hours done so let's see how I do today. I don't think I'll do as much reading today because we're going to pause to do the baking thing at 2pm uh, but it's all a bit of fun isn't it? Oh, you ruined my whole thing. Sorry. Halfway through, exactly. And I'm also about two thirds of the way through what we lose, um, which is reading so quickly. Lots of it is pictures and almost, almost like poems. There's, there's, it's lots of snapshots. Um, and so I think this is a very short book and it will read very quickly so I'm definitely going to finish it soon. It's about a woman grieving the loss of her mother who's died of cancer and she's sort of jumping back and remembering things but it's also I guess reconciling her mother's South African past to her South African family um, and her living in the US um, with different ideas of blackness and race and what that means in South Africa, what it means in the US and just it's lots and lots of thoughts and also her relationship with various people and I am really enjoying it. I'm going to be interested to see how it all kind of comes together at the end because there's a lot of topics that she's that she's touching on in this. But yeah, 12 hours in. <laughs> I mean, am I gonna get to 24 by the end of tomorrow? Probably not. I'd love how other people do this in a weekend, try and get 24 hours of reading done and I can't even do it in four, four whole days of sitting around doing nothing. But um, I'm gonna make sure I finish this, I think, before I start baking. Um, and then pick up something else this afternoon. We've got half an hour to go before we start our live show, but I'm gonna start making my cookies now because they are the type that are sort of gooey in the middle, which means I have to put them in the freezer for half an hour before cooking them. So I'm gonna get a batch prepared and in the freezer um, so that I can be putting them in the oven during the show. Um, so, see how it goes. I'm 
I'm guessing it's just going to go live, but there is a go live button that I can press if it doesn't. Fine. But it's got a little thing for comments at the side. So I guess it goes via YouTube to here, right? Yeah. It's showtime. Yeah. Okay, I think I have to press go live. Oh, right. We are live. So I guess that works. Oh my god, a person! Yes! Yeah. I don't I always buy cookbooks and then never do any of the recipes from them. There's lots of mixture left, I don't know if these are gonna be very big, but <laughs> I find it goes everywhere. <laughs> you want to see my kitchen back there? I'm absolutely exhausted now. <laughs> there was like an hour and a half um, we were live streaming for, which was fun. But I was also trying to like make cookies and run the thing, but it was good. This is my first batch which I've had a couple from um, but my second batch is in the oven right now and I don't know if you can see but they are looking pretty rad look at those so we will have cookies for a very long time they're really rich as well <laughs> so like, I, I keep like going to eat them and thinking oh god I really can't have any more of that but if you are bored and fancy watching an hour and a half of us larking about I think the live stream is still going to be up on my channel um, so pretty evidently, not much reading has got done, <laughs> um, but that's it now, got no more plans uh, for the rest of the afternoon, so I'm, I'm so close to finishing the Zinzi Clemens, so I'm hoping to finish that and then get onto another book today, and then, I mean, that will have, that will have been a lot achieved in one day, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> It's half past seven and I think I've just lost it. <laughs> I'm just tired. I'm like at that really weird stage of being like bored, but also bored of reading. And um, just like weirdly restless. I think because I had a cold the last couple of days, I've not gone outside at all. And um, I actually probably really, now that I'm feeling better, like I really need to go on a run or something. I need to do that tomorrow. Like I need to go for a walk, go for a run expend some energy not just sit around eating cookies <laughs> also do some exercise because it just left me feeling all all weird and silly if i'm at 13 and a half hours and i have to i have to at least get to 14 this evening i mean even if i do there is no way i'm doing 10 hours of reading tomorrow that's just ridiculous um but i reckon i can do a bit more but also i want to do more because i am enjoying reading this it's very easy to read and it's very interesting it's just about the life of a shepherd <laughs> as it says on the cover in the lake district and we were supposed to go to the lake district this friday which obviously not going and uh it's quite nice to read it it's got a very similar vibe of reading this book it feels very similar to watching country file which is what me and will like doing like when they're talking about lambing and stuff so it's just it's just a nice read and out on the balcony it has been very nice this evening because it's just chill not so hot anymore um but we've had some dinner we ordered some thai and uh i think what we might do later um once i've done a little bit more reading is do fake pub this is what me and will have always done pre even pre-isolation is we put like pub sounds on there's actually an asmr um video that we normally put on which is like the green dragon from lord of the rings like there's like sounds of being in the green dragon and we put that on 
and light some candles and just like sit in here and pretend we're in a pub <laughs> and and chat and we have done that before i'm not ashamed to say and i think we might do that this evening because it's getting to the point where we are together all the time which is lovely but we're not actually like talking do you know what i mean about like real things because there's nothing really to update each other on because we're just in the same room and we talk about stuff but not really like about more in-depth topics so it feels like I haven't really chatted to him properly for a while. So we are going to do that this evening, I think. But I'm going to read a bit more of my book. I have read quite a lot quite quickly, to be honest. I've only been reading it for about half an hour, about 30 pages in. So I will read a bit more of that. <laughs> oh, it's funny how when you turn something into a game, like even if it's something you enjoy and love, it turns into a chore. <laughs> good morning but it's actually nearly two o'clock now but today has been extremely lazy so far this feels like the true Sunday um, which I guess it is really since we're going back to work tomorrow but I've just spent my morning finishing off this book which is a really really nice really nice read I think it's the kind of thing if you like the Lake District which I do um, you'll find very interesting partly the story of a shepherd's year and what a shepherd has to do in the Lake District, what the farming is like, um, but also a look back at James Ree Banks's own childhood growing up, helping his, his dad and his granddad on the farm, and the history of the people of that area. And um, I really enjoyed that part of it, like his, his look at the hard-working, normal people who are very egalitarian and all about the hard work that you put into breeding and looking after a flock and just the oral history of the local farms and he really shows it for what it is which is a, a very separate ancient culture um, which is not the type of lake district a lot of holiday makers see when they go and visit it and you go there for the windsurfing and for the fell walking and the beauty of the landscape and um, he says in the book that for a long time he didn't really understand that why you'd want to visit that because that's not what the land was like the land is how it is and how it appears because of the work people like him do and because of the farming because of the people maintaining the ancient walls and um farmhouses and all this stuff and i really like the picture he paints of this no nonsense practical people um who are very intelligent and like of their own world and not really fussed with kind of the outside world as much yeah it was lovely and it just made me pine made me pine for the hills so where am i now in my reading journey let's get this clock up da, 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 da. 17 and a half hours so i definitely have time for one more book and that's a bit of a shame because i want to read all of them i've been very ambitious over this long weekend but i think i might actually read sula um because i've I, I just really want to read that. I think I'm hankering for that kind of uh, that kind of writing at the moment. So I'm going to get stuck on that. Will I make it the 24 hours? Probably not, but I remain optimistic. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm also quite worried about how I'm going to find time to edit this absolutely monster vlog. I don't know if it's going to get out this week. I will try my hardest, but <laughs> it's going to be so much footage. Oh dear. And all I've done is sit around read.
Oh my god, done. I am done. Well, I'm done with Sula. I'm not done with 24 hours. I am at 20, 20 and a half, which isn't too bad. Um, I'm going to stop now because it's nearly eight o'clock and I want to enjoy the rest of my Monday. I'm not going to go mental trying to get, get any, any more red than that. Um, but Sula was very, very, very good. I almost feel bad because it's a short book and it reads very quickly. I almost feel like I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have read it as part of this challenge because actually there's so much in there and Toni Morrison's writing's so brilliant that I wish I'd spent more time on it rather than rocketed through it, but it was very good and I'm gonna sort of think about it, ruminate on it a little bit, I think, before I actually review it. Um, so, over the course of the four day weekend, this is where I got to, six books. That's not bad, especially for me, because um, I don't read that quickly. And yeah, on reflection, I've really enjoyed like actively trying to read a lot, but I don't think I've enjoyed the timing aspect of it. Like trying to get six hours a day done has been quite stressful. Um, and I do feel a little bit, because I've not done the 24 hours, like I, I do kind of feel like I haven't properly completed it. Um, but I'm still pleased. I'm still really pleased with what with what I've read and I'll review them all properly as well in coming videos. And I guess I will still at some point have a go at reading the rest of these. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching this challenge. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these books if you've read them um, and if you've done any other challenges like this. Oh, and I'll see you in my next video after I've had a good sleep, I think. Bye.